I'm very happy to uh, bump into you. Uh, I'm very pleased that uh, sons and dads are, ha are acting together and spending time together, going to the pool together. This is to me is an amazing idea. One of the things that my sons are much older than actually similar. Some of some of the dads are maybe similar to my son's age, but. I have two sons, one uh, 30 and the other one 32. They are my friends. I mean, we go out shopping, we go out for lunch. They ask me my opinion, I ask them their opinion. I'm hoping that one day, when you guys grow up to be in my son's age, that you and your dad will have this type of friendship. That doesn't mean your sister should not have the same friendship. Of course they should, and they ought to. But at least for this group, I'm hoping that this meeting or this conference is a, as a beginning of friendship. That doesn't mean, by the way, you will always be happy with your dad, and that doesn't mean your dad is always going to be happy with you. There will be times you will say, he ha he's the worst dad I ever had. I wish he goes away. And your dad sometimes would say, I don't know why God is punishing me to give me this son. But that doesn't mean we don't love each other and we're not going to be friends. And the five languages of love, I would like to review with you a few things and I'll speak to both, dad and son. Time, touches, actions, gifts, words. Time, touches, actions, gifts, and words. And we'll take one at a time. The words. One of the best words you can learn to do or to say as a dad or as a son, to say, I'm sorry. I'll tell you a story about uh, uh, a son told me about his dad. Very true story. Two very well raised, one son and one daughter, their father was one of those who was very interested in soccer games during the, when Egypt was and lost two years ago in the World Cup. So he was watching in the, in the subway or in the bus in his phone. As soon as he comes home, he picks up the, the remote control. He goes in and changes the channel and put the game and then watches. The kids were really very well raised. They didn't like the soccer, the football, I mean, Egyptian football. So they took themselves and went to the room. Next day, dad comes in, he gave him the remote control. He's going to do it again. He said, guys, I'm very sorry. What I did yesterday was very bad. I came in, I budged in, I didn't excuse, I didn't ask for your excuse. I didn't request, if you don't mind, if I change the channel, I'm very, very sorry. The son told me that he was so proud of his dad, that his dad knew how to say sorry. One of the best words I as a son or you as a dad can tell each other, we are sorry. The other word, and I looked at the, the forms that you guys were playing in, the other form was saying how much some of the words, I care about you, I love you, um, you are my best son. Uh, Dad, I'm very proud of you. Dad, I am, I am, I'm very grateful that you are doing so much for me and my mom and my sister. Dad, I know it's too tough on you out there, but I really appreciate it. These words of appreciation makes your dad wants to move mountains because he feels that you are saying something that makes a difference to him. He may be very, very appreciated at work and people are saying you are the best this and best this, but when it comes from his son or his wife or his daughter, wow. And the same on your dad and you dads when you tell your son that I'm very proud of you. In my eyes, you are the best son any father could have. These words are so appreciated. Also, the idea of listening. Some of the things the word we say and then I'm looking at my phone while my dad's talking to me. 
Or you are looking at the phone and your son, Dad, are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening, I'm listening. And he's doing this and looking at the Facebook and all that. That's not what we call active listening. Active listening, my eye is at his eyes, my phone is away from me, you and your dad. Um, I am listening with my ears, I'm listening with my eyes, I'm listening with my face. What does that mean? I don't say, oh, come on, he's going to tell me another lecture again. You have a question? Oh, you agree? Thank you. Thank you. I love that. Um, the word I love you, we sometimes, Egyptian fathers and sons don't say it so much. And sometimes when we get older, some of the teenagers do not want to say it. But at least try to make an effort to say, I love you, dad, or I love you, son. Or, and you can say it in many, uh, many. There is another word called the forgiveness words, or the words of forgiveness. Um, it's very important. Please don't keep track with mistakes your son have done. Don't keep telling him, you, you did this three times this year. Yeah, I know you can keep track, but the Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, does not keep track with our mistakes, right? He does not come and tell you, I know you, this is the sixth time you have been doing this. No, he doesn't keep track. So we as sons should not be keeping track of how many mistakes my father have done because it doesn't help me. And we as fathers, we should not keep track of how frequent the same mistake is done because if I'm admitting that we are all humans, right? You are not God and your son is not God. So unfortunately, we will keep repeating mistakes. As a dad, I made so many mistakes in my life. So many mistakes. I am very not proud of them. But I'm very proud that my son didn't keep track of how many mistakes I have done. And thankfully, I, I don't remember their mistakes either. To tell you the truth, if you ask me today, I don't remember even one mistake. And that doesn't mean they were sinless, but it tells you the relationship was good, that neither of us kept track with each other, and we did not remind each other. You are a failure, you keep doing this. I know you, you will keep doing it again and again. You are going to fail me again. You are going to not to be good. You are not going to be a good future. We don't want these words. My dad always says that. Yeah, but he's not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did it bad. All, all dads, Habibi, do this. It's not just your dad. But Dr. Eddie, I... One second, guys, let's hear. I just, uh, on this uh, one point, I think sometimes it backfires. If we keep saying that, maybe they weren't going to be this way. Oh. But we keep saying it, and actually they believe that themselves, about themselves. Yeah, that's wrong. You mean when we keep repeating? When we keep repeating. Yes, yes. It's very important we, if we have to repeat uh, that you did it again, you are trying to tell him, Habibi, I noticed that you keep falling in the same mistake again. How can I help you not to fall in the same trap over and over again? It's almost somebody, every time he drives, he hits the left wall. Every time, the left wall of the garage. So we say, Dad, how can I help you not to hit the left wall of the garage? You seem you are always leaning towards the left. How can we help you not to do that? When we do this, we, we try not to make a mistake. Yeah, I mean, all the right. Okay, one of, the, one of the good words is, I'm going to say the things we should not say. One of the things we should not say, Dad, you never do anything good for me. Dad, you always do these bad things to me. The never, the always should not be said. As a dad or as a son, I should not tell my son, I can't believe you did this again, uh, or I don't think I can ever forgive you. Or, I don't think you realize how much I was hurt by what you did for me. The word never and always are difficult words, difficult to swallow. And some of the kids may remember it when they grow up. Because my dad always never believed I'll be good. My dad never, never remembered except the bad things I did. Or, you as a son, you always um, tell your dad something. Dad, you always treat us very bad. 
You will never change that. But, but it's, it's, that's what you have to have. Okay, I have to leave. Okay. 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 Number two. Let's talk about different, different one, which is the time. Time. Many years, actually, before I say that, I know where is the word, but I know some of the dads may remember something called focus on the family. Focus on the family was designed by a guy, I'm not sure if he's still alive. His name is Dr. James Dobson. I used to listen to him. He had a radio channel many years ago when my kids were young. One of the things he taught me, or I learned from him, that kids spell father as T-I-M-E. Kids spell father as T-I-M-E. I didn't make a mistake, I meant to say. Father to the kids is not F-A-T-H-E-R, but rather T-I-M-E. You are only a father with how much time you spend with your kids. Not because you gave birth to a son, you are a father. But you are a father when you know how to give time, especially quality time, the best of your time, long time, and undistracted time. So for example, I'm going to make a scenario. My son comes to me and says, Dad, I need to talk to you. Okay, can you talk fast? I'm very busy now. Go, talk, talk. I am distracted. I'm not giving him my best time. I want him to finish fast. But he wants to talk to me. Oh, seriously? But I'm busy now, Habibi. Can you give me 10 minutes? Let me finish this. I'll be right with you. I'm busy. I couldn't answer him. Then 10 minutes later, I leave my phone. Let's, let's sit away, Habibi, so nobody interrupt us. Know your sister, know your mom, know nobody else, not my phone. What do you want to talk about? I'm giving him uninterrupted time. I'm giving him my best time. And I'm giving him as much time he wants. No phones, no technology, nobody else. The same goes if your dad wants to talk to you, Habibi. If dad tells you, Peter, uh, Matthew, uh, Max, whatever your name is, I want to talk to you. You may be busy, you want to finish a game, fine. Dad, can you give me 10 minutes? Not, not now, Dad, not now. I don't have time for you. That's not nice. But you can tell him, Dad, do you mind if I finish the game and then we talk? Sure, Habibi, no problem. As soon as you finish the game, don't start another game. That's not nice. You tell Dad, Dad, I'm done. Do you want, what do you want to talk about? So your dad will take you out and sit, and then, Habibi, I want to talk to you about something. And then you start looking at your phones and you want to play the game. That's not nice. If your dad wants to talk to you, your phone is off. You are not interrupted by anything. You look at your dad's eyes and you do not get distracted and nothing else matters except what dad wants to tell you. Because maybe your dad will tell you something that will make a difference all your life, not just this, this occasion. Maybe he will tell you, Habibi, I'm, I'm very concerned about this friend of yours. I feel since you became friend with this person, your grades are not good. You hate to attend liturgy. I notice that your words are not coming the best way. And I'm very worried about you. Can you tell me more about your friend? You have. Your dad is giving you all his experience in life. All his experience. He has experience of 40 years ahead of you. Who can get that? Or 35 years of experience. If I have 35 years as a doctor, I should be knowing I have seen all types of diseases. Can you imagine your dad has 28, 25, 30 years, 40 years of experience? You better listen. Because when your dad give you his experience, you never have to give him time, you have to give him the best time, you have to give him the uninterrupted time. All right? Now, when you speak about touches, no, yes, Habib? In the last slide, yeah? um, if, what does quantity mean? Quantity means, for example, I am dad. I am dad. I'm not you. 
And then he talked to me. So he started talking and I was uninterrupted. I am looking at you, listening to you, but then, I'm sorry, I don't have time more than this. Can we, can we finish this? So I only give you seven minutes and you needed 10. So quantity means I give you the time you want. As much time you want. You understand that? And the same goes for you if, if, you're, if, you wanna, if your dad wants to talk to you. Dad, you, you took five minutes. I, I don't have time for you anymore. Come on, man. Give your dad time. He wants to tell you something. And this something maybe will change your life. So give him your attention. No distraction. Give him the time he wants. Because he's not trying to make your life miserable. He wants to give you an advice. You have a question? Yes. That from the heart, exactly. You should give the lecture next time. <laughs> okay, number three. We have five languages of love, right? Number three, touches. I'm going to, to, to give you a very good idea about what are the touches your dad and your son likes. One of the touches, or some of the touches has to be um, like you play with your with his hair, I think it was written. You tap him on the shoulder. You uh, you smile at him. It's not a touch, but you're smiling at your son. Um, you 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 um, you greet him warmly. Um, um, you look at him with with proud with pride. Um, uh, you kiss him. That's a touch. Maybe when, when, when he's an older guy, a teenager, some boys may not like their dads kissing them in front of people. That's okay, but at least in, in other occasions, your dad, dad like to kiss him, kiss you. But not maybe in front of the girls and all of that. I know what you mean. I, I know this, this side there, uh, we are connected there. I know that, I know that. We'll talk later. But, um, but seriously, touches, is something our Lord Jesus Christ he did. You know when he met, when he met the leper, and the leper means a bad, a badly infected guy. Like everybody's scared from him. Nobody wants to come near him. And Jesus touched him to the extent when he touched him, he clinched because nobody touched him. His wife didn't touch him. His kids refused to touch him. Everybody told him, stay away, stay away, leper, leper. Nobody comes near him. But then Jesus touched him. And as soon as he's touching him, he was so happy. Jesus could have, could have healed them without touching him. said, be healed. Get away from me. But by him being touched, the guy felt so loved. So the touch means I love you. When I touch you in a, in a nice way, I'm not hitting you, but I'm touching you. I'm touching you. I am playing with your hair. All of this is good. So when you touch your dad, when you kiss your dad, when you hug your dad, when you want to hold his hand, when you walk out with your dad, all of this are good touches. Of course, when it gets, if your son gets annoyed from something, please get a little bit backward, don't, don't push it. And the same if your dad as well. Number four, actions. Actions can be your, your love language. When you help your son sitting down while he is doing a math quiz and he hates math, and you are sitting next to him, you tell him, listen, I think you are going to do right. Let me sit next to you, and if you need some help, I'm not good in math, but I'll do my best. That's by itself is a labor of love. But, um, another, uh, you share with him, he's doing an art project, and you are very good in art, crafts, and painting, and you sit next to your son, maybe. I'm not asking you to do the project, and I'm asking you to share. I, my son who is 30 years old, still remembers a project we did together as an Indian village with Jardin Kledo, his Kledo, huh? Kledo, and some crafts, and we did it together when he was 12. And he still remembers it. It was fun, but at the same time, he remembers that I shared the labor of work with him. Maybe your dad wants to fix something in the car, wants to clean the car, wants to wash the car, wants to organize his computer, wants to organize his desk. And he said, Dad, can I help you? Can I do it with you? Can I organize something for you? Can I clean the car for you? These 
labor of love, makes your dad feel he cares. This son cares about me. Especially when you do it unexpectedly. Yani, if your dad asks, I want you to clean my car, and you do it, that's great. But if you tell him, Dad, I want to clean your car, is that okay with you? And, and it wasn't expected. Or, or the dad tells his son, Habibi, uh, I, 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 want, I want to go with you to the basketball game because I feel I didn't go last time. Although this is a labor on you because you come late and you come tired, but you said, I want to come with you to the basketball. I want to see you playing. I'm very proud of you. But then I don't play very good. Who said that? You are playing very good. I'm very proud of you. You don't have to put every hoop, but you, you assist in many, in many uh, plays. Of course, the, the action must be wanted by the other. Yeah, and if dad doesn't want you to clean his car and you cleaned it, and he just cleaned it, why are you doing it? Do the action that's desired by the other. Your son doesn't want you to, for example, go with him to the basketball because he's not going to attend the basketball. Why are you insisting on it? So choose something that he can... Number five, gifts. Huh? Gifts can be many things, but the best gift, when you give a gift that's unexpected and has no reason. Like if it's a birthday, of course. Dad's birthday, son's birthday, mom's uh, birthday, Christmas. Christmas, whatever, Easter, whatever. But can you imagine, there is no need, there is no reason. And then you are dad coming home and you decided to pick up a bar of chocolate, something five dollars, ten dollars. You got him a game that he wants to upload and he didn't know you are going to bring it, but you decided to bring it. You thought of him? You consider something he needs and he wants, and you brought it in a time that's unexpected. That's the best gift. Best gift. Unexpected, wanted, and come in a time that he didn't, he didn't know about. He did not even, it's a surprise. Yes? You also get like chocolate bowl. Yes, you like chocolate? No, that's not the best gift. That's not your best gift. Then. Your dad has... Okay. Only best gift and your your parents. Right. <laughs> All right. Very well said. Um, and and also the gifts, the gifts, in the way you present it. You want to give something to your dad, and of course you don't have money as much as your dad. Your dad is much richer than you. But then you want to give him maybe a tie for ten dollars. And you went with your mom and told her, Mom, I would like to buy something for dad. What is the occasion? No, there is no occasion. I just want to get him something. I saw a, a cheap place that sells ties for $10. But, but that's very cheap. That's okay, Mom. I'll just buy it. One second. So you went and buy it. And then you put it in a box. And you wrote something in it. And you made a bow in it or something. And you present it in a very nice way. And you put it on on his car, so he went, opened his car, he found the present. Wow. So the way of presentation is far better than the value of the tie itself. And he would love it. And the same goes that to, his, to your son. Yes, Habib? But it, in, the, in the first uh, scenario, yes. when you said you should ask mom to get something for your dad, wouldn't your mom be jealous? Yeah, you're right, but maybe one very good point. And we don't want problems, you never know. But maybe one time you're going out with your dad and tell him, Dad, can I, can I get for my mom? Uh, I heard that she wants a cream and I saw her looking at it. Can I get her the cream? And your dad was, wow, that's a great idea. So you are helping your dad to get a present for mom. So one time this way, one time this way. So these things are not just for dad, by the way. It could be your sister, it could be your mom. You know, and of course, this the same thing, the same lecture can be for your son, for your daughter, for your wife. So, whatever I said can apply to anyone in the family. Um, I think I'm done. I promise it's not going to be long. Uh, any questions? Yes, Habib. Oh, no. no, somebody else has a question. Yes. Right? 
I, I would prefer family. Uh, if you have to do it for anybody else, mom and dad has to agree on it. So I am speaking here within your immediate family. Other questions? Yes, Habib. Huh? So sometimes it doesn't have to be money. Uh, I mean, I have I have kept up till now. Agree a card that my son drew for me when he was I think six years old, and I still have it up till all these years because to me that's much more precious than he went and buy a card for three dollars. He drew something. I know it wasn't good drawing, but he said I love that or I don't know what he wrote, and to me I kept it up till now and I showed it to him when he when he finished uh, uh, school, uh, college, yes. Why is it important that uh, we know which one of the five? Yeah, so by the way, you may have more than one. Like I know people who usually, a lot of people actually, according to statistics, they may have two languages of love, number one and two. Like for example, you, you want your dad to touch you and to spend time with you. And of course, when you review, when your dad review uh, your answers, he will know that you don't, you like hugging, but at the same time, you like that he goes with you to the basketball game and to spend time with you in the car and keep talking to you in the car because you like spending time. So it's important for your dad to know your language of love so he can offer it to you so your love is fulfilled. And at the same time, you're, you should know what is good for your dad. If your dad, for example, loves that you spend time with him and you do some work for him, like you do a, a service or labor, it's good because your dad would be very happy. Him first and then you. Yes. Oh, so like why should we like be buying like love with gifts? Like, no, you don't have to. As I said, the, maybe, maybe, let's say your mom. Let's talk about ladies because ladies usually love gifts more than men. Okay. Your mom, for example, her language of love is to give her a gift. And then when you and your dad going home, you decided, Dad, can we stop and buy a bar of chocolate for mom and my sister? He didn't tell you, you came up with, I, I'm not saying you're buying love or selling love, but some people love gifts, not because they are expensive, not because they cannot buy it for themselves, but it means that you thought about it. Okay? Yes, Habib. Um, why didn't our, our parents answer like questions? For we know. I actually I agree with you. I think there should. I was looking for another form for us dads and for you to know what's my language of love as a father. I think it's a great idea. And I know if you have a form, but it's a very smart form. Yes. Anything else? Yes, Habib. We should. We should like do something. Yeah, you don't have to have money to give a gift. As I said, if you draw something in a piece of paper with, with com some coloring, believe me, your dad will appreciate it much more than uh, mine. Thank you very much. I know you have other things to do. It's great meeting you. I'm here until tomorrow, so I'm sure we'll bump into each other again. Thank you.